What is up, everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. So this is a brand new video I'm doing, and I had to, I have to let you all out there see my reaction. So let me let me talk about what I've been doing tonight. I was, I was bored, it's Friday night, and I'm like, you know what? I wanna learn more about Kratom. I work at a drug and alcohol rehab, uh, treatment center. People ask me about Kratom, coming off of opiates and stuff. And I'm very open-minded. I'm very open-minded. Um, some of you saw one of my videos that I did about harm reduction against it, but there are safe forms of harm reduction. I'm like, okay, what's this Kratom thing? Let me learn about it. So there's this channel, which you're about to watch, Psyched Substance. I go to this guy because he talks about harm reduction, does a lot of stuff with psychedelics and things like that. And the dude, uh, let me, let me say it this way. He labels himself as very scientific and knowledgeable and understanding, and he puts out the right information. He's done other videos, trashing other harm reduction channels and things like that. And I was like, okay, this dude knows what he's talking about with Kratom. But in my other video where I talk about harm reduction and how dangerous it can be, it's talking about switching one drug for another right? And never really getting down to the root of the problem. That was my argument. So I'm like, okay, let's see what's going on with Kratom. Maybe this is something that I just don't know anything about. So I'm going to show you his first video, the one I just watched, right? And here's, here's part of it right here. So let's watch it together. Okay. And by the way, I'm doing this and this is a little bit longer. I apologize it's a little bit longer, but it's going to be worth it, okay? But I want you guys to see my reactions to this stuff because it is insane. All right, let's go. All right, so this is video number one that he made in 2016. Although it's easier to, say, kick a Kratom habit than a heroin habit, Kratom is addicting. And if you have an addictive personality and, say, you're not using it to wean yourself off opiates, it may be in your best interest to stay away from it. The withdrawal. Okay, okay. So here's something. You'll see it in the next video I take you to in a second. This guy, he always talks about addictive personality, okay? No clue what that means. I don't understand how you can label yourself as a harm reduction channel, right? Harm reduction for addiction. This is better. This is a better option. But he doesn't understand addiction at all. He uses the word addictive. He talks about addictive personality and addiction like they're two separate things. Like, I, I don't know what how he separates them. I'm wondering if maybe he thinks one of them psychological and the other one's uh, physical, but it doesn't make sense the way he separates the two, okay? So I th this one, I just want to point that out. And he talks, right now he's going to talk about the withdrawal effects, and I might skip forward a little bit where he talks about some other stuff. So hold on. Withdrawals aren't terrible, but there are definite opiate-like withdrawals. People report having like a runny nose. Okay, so let me get this straight, homeboy. So this is a drug that should be used to get off of opiates, but it's potentially addictive, and the withdrawals from it are similar to opiates. I'm, I'm starting to fail to see the benefits of Kratom, okay? So let me skip forward a little bit. Go for it. In conclusion, I would recommend Kratom to anyone who's struggling with an opiate addiction. I strongly believe in its potential to help people crush life-threatening addictions. I would also recommend Kratom to anyone who needs a boost in focus. I'd even recommend Kratom as a replacement for Adderall in people who are struggling with the nasty comedowns that Adderall has. I so, okay. I, I just don't understand his logic here. So... There's another part in this video, okay, where he talks about how he knows it's addictive, he doesn't recommend anybody uses it daily because it can become addictive, but then he promotes people using it as an alternative to Adderall. In this video, I will link to it in the description below, he talks about using it as a social lubricant and using it, um, you know, to relax and calm down, but just don't use it every day, okay? And like... Isn't that the problem with addiction in the first place? Isn't that one of the major issues? Like, I would love, I would personally, as a recovering opiate addict, I would love to just do it when I wanted to. Same thing with alcohol. All right, so that was a clip from his video that he made in 2016. Okay, you can find it right here. August 15, 2016. Crazy thing. It's crazy how the universe works. I watched this video, and I'm like, I wonder if this guy's made any new videos lately. And yesterday, just yesterday, he made this brand new video. Let's let's go to the thumbnail. You guys got to see the thumbnail. Hold on. All right, so wait a second. Videos. 
So right here, right here. The thumbnail says, if you can't read it, it's time for the lies to end. And then it says, why I stopped taking Kratom. Is it truly safe? And I just saw that. I'm like, I wonder how this story is going to play out. So I'll be transparent with you. I watched the first five minutes of this and I'm like, no, 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 no. My reactions, like, I'm like, I got to record this live because I need to solidify my point as to why harm reduction is is stupid in very many forms, okay? So let's watch this together. I'm gonna start it back where I started, but like I said, this is gonna be a longer video. I'm gonna be pausing it and pointing out different things, but let's watch it together. You ready? Let's do this. So first he starts off this video, just so let you know why it's fast forwarded a little bit. He made this huge like disclaimer. Hey, anybody at Google who's watching this, this follows all the guidelines. Don't demonetize my video. Like, sorry, dude, they demonetize everything. So you're screwed. Okay, anyways, let's move forward. Let's see, let's see what he has to say about why he stopped using Kratom, all right? Let's go. Help in making them ban Kratom, you really do need to hear me out and listen to my story. Because in actuality, what I believe is that this video will help it remain legal. But not only that, it will also help to protect a lot of the users out there from the mountains of bullshit that Kratom advocates have been peddling, my old self included, uh, which does nothing but really harm both the user and just Kratom as a whole. Okay, so this is part of the issue right here. So you can all... It seems like this guy, okay, and by the way, I might be totally wrong, and if I'm wrong, feel free to flame me in the comments or whatever. I might be totally wrong, but you can, I can already tell that he's, he's trying not to take full responsibility or admit that he was wrong, okay? But he does mention his older self not being well enough educated, getting his information from the internet, Okay, and that's that by the way, that's one of the downfalls of YouTube. Like you can research anything and anybody can throw up any ran random information, no credibility, no licensing, no credentials at all, and we take it as the word of God, which is mind blowing. <laughs> like like I'm not surprised. Like this guy he's like, Wait, what? The the stuff I the stuff I Googled that that stuff I Googled wasn't wasn't accurate? And it's like Sorry, dude. Okay, so there's a little funny thing he does with Google Home. Check it out. Okay, Google, how long does Kratom withdrawal last? Here's a summary from the website encebotanicals.com. Another similarity is found between caffeine and Kratom withdrawal duration, typically lasting from three to four days. Okay, Google, your information is wrong. I always try to tell the truth. I take honesty seriously. Now, before I get into my own story as to why I stopped taking Kratom, um, that was cute. That was really cute. Of which the details might shock some of you, I do need to make it undeniably clear that by no means is the intent of this video to suggest that Kratom is inherently harmful or that I'm necessarily against its use for those individuals who do need it. For these reasons, before I... Okay, so... Again, I'm going to speculate on where this is going, and I might be wrong, okay? Um, so, it, what I'm assuming is that he had a bad experience, he became addicted. That's what I'm guessing. But again, he's trying to cover his tracks and be like, look, I think it can help people. I'm somebody who became addicted, but not everybody. This is often the argument you hear with pharmaceutical industries. Not everybody gets addicted to opiates that they prescribe, but a lot of them do. But not all of them, but a lot of them do. And it sounds like he's trying to play that game too, which is very, very dangerous. Before I do get into my story, I think it's absolutely necessary that I first point out reasons as to why Kratom should remain legal and available, regardless of my own personal experience with the compound. So, sorry, I was getting down to the music a little, okay. So you can skip to 538 if you already knew everything there is to know about Kratom. So this is a little review, a little recap for you guys too if you didn't know about Kratom. And it says, and how it can help addicts, exclamation point. All right, I'm gonna have something to say about that in a minute. 
For those of you who don't know, Kratom or Kratom is a psychoactive plant which is native to Southeast Asia. It has been consumed by the locals for probably hundreds of years. What people like to do is drink the dried powdered leaves for its various medicinal and psychoactive effects. Uh, for one, it's a very powerful analgesic. Uh, it can cause euphoria. And also, depending on the dose and strain, it can either increase somebody's energy and cause them to feel more motivated, or it can have the opposite effect and make someone feel very relaxed and chill and, well, sedated. It can make you extremely tired. Sit okay, so this is something he mentioned in the last video. And by the way, I was pointing out my cat. She's adorable. She likes to nap back there. Anyways, so this is something he talked about in the last video. He talks about the euphoric effect it gives. Like, this is how things become addictive. Our brain is based on a habit loop, trigger, behavior, reward, right? I'm bored. I use Kratom or another drug, I get a reward, right? Euphoria, whatever it is. Our brain then wants to repeat that cycle the next time we experience that same trigger, okay? So the way he lays it, like this is why it's important to talk about addiction is not a problem with a specific substance. Addiction is a problem with the way we set up our own personal habit loops. Typically, it involves the way our brain fires off dopamine when we do certain things. Nothing to do with drugs. I've made this argument very clear. This is why there's gambling addicts, sex addicts, food addicts, and most recently, in recent years, we have internet and gaming addicts, social media addicts, okay? Nothing to do with substances. It's a psychological mental dis disorder. There's physical dependencies that come along with substances, but the primary problem with addiction is that it is the way we rewire our neural pathways. Safety-wise, no one has ever been documented to have died directly as a result of kratom consumption. People have died who had kratom found in their system, but it was never proven, at least undeniably, that kratom was the cause of their demise. In the United States, they currently are claiming that 36 people total have in fact died from just simply overdosing on kratom. Now all right, hold on, what did this say? But again, these individuals were found to have other drugs in their system as well. This means it is likely they died as a result of a drugged cocktail. Okay. Something that's common, but I don't know. If Kratom works so well, why didn't they stop doing the other drugs? Now let's just pretend for a second that this information is true and 36 people have total. What gets me is that this number is still remarkably low, especially when you consider things like every single year, 500 or more people die from being stepped on by elephants or over 300 people die every year due to overdosing on Tylenol. Not to mention... Like this, this is a classic you know, uh, tactic that people use in their debates. They they bring up these completely, like totally off the wall statistics, you know what I mean, to make their case better. Like, listen, dude, like I would say 36 people, like you don't, you don't have to like talk about elephants stomping on people or Tylenol overdoses to make your point. 36 is already a pretty low number, you know what I mean? But is still a number. Now, one thing that I will say that we have to take into consideration, the availability of Kratom, right? Okay, compared to these other things. Now, I know what you're thinking right now, Chris, but elephants don't like go marching down the street. Well, I've seen like, if you go around on YouTube, there's like people like in other countries like messing around with elephants, like taming them and stuff. Like 500 isn't very surprising to me. Um, but, you know, maybe the number's so small due to the availability of it. Keep that in mind. Mentioned that in other countries such as Canada, they don't have a single confirmed or even, you know, supposed death attached to Kratom. I this is gonna be good. A lot of individuals, especially those with addictive personalities. Hear that? There it is again. Those with addictive personalities. What does that mean? it can be better than pharmaceutical grade uh, pain medications, primarily because Kratom has a very strong ceiling effect. Basically, when users dose too high, which can often mean just one gram or sometimes even less than their average dose, which might only be four or five grams, um, what can happen is a complete flip of effects where they might have been already feeling euphoric and say they were trying to dose more to feel higher to use it recreationally. 
Instead, what can happen is the user can become nauseous uh, to the point where they vomit sometimes for hours on end. And also all of the good feelings that they did have will, well, they really just will turn to shit. Usually what happens is when a user first realizes that you can't keep taking Kratom to get higher and higher, they keep their doses to average, you know, levels because they don't want to feel like shit again. Okay. So, so here's, here's the thing. So I don't know if any of you are familiar with the medication called Antabuse. Um, I've talked about naltrexone a little bit on my channel. Um, and I'd be interested to know about those 36 deaths. So Antabuse is um, an alcohol antagonist. If you drink alcohol while you're taking Antabuse, you'll puke, okay? It makes you sick. It makes you violently ill, so you don't want to drink again. But because of the psychological dependence, people keep doing it. Same thing with naltrexone. I've talked about this in my other videos. Naltrexone has a pretty high success rate, 80 something percent. But there are people who still drink and binge drink while on that medication, okay? So the idea that if you try to use more Kratom, you'll get so sick that you'll just like go back to doing your thing. Like this is not how addiction works. It is so powerful that we want to use more, we use more anyways. Any alcoholics watching this, you know what I'm talking about, even drug addicts out there. We, we keep using and we keep drinking even if we're not getting the effects. Like that's how sick and twisted this disease of addiction actually is. Or a lot of people actually just never even touch Kratom again after that experience. That's why it is such a powerful substance in my opinion for helping. Okay, he's about to say for helping addicts. So, he says, most people never touch Kratom again. Okay, let's take into consideration that statistically, one out of every 12 people is a drug addict or alcoholic. They are the real thing. They're the real one, okay? Most people are going to stop using Kratom after a bad experience, okay? But here's the, here's the difference. Let's use alcohol, for example. Here's the difference between an alcoholic and a non-alcoholic. An alcoholic can have the worst experience, vomiting, DUI, you know, punching holes in the walls, trashing their house, and they will keep doing it. A non-alcoholic, like, gets a tummy ache, or they have a bad hangover one day, and they're like, oh, I'm never touching stuff, and they don't. Like, that's the difference between us. The real alcoholic or the real addict keeps doing it despite the negative consequences. That's addiction in the nutshell, by the way, people. Re Repeating the same action despite negative consequences. Here's something else that's kind of bothered me about this Psych Substance channel. He has actually made videos about how he had problems with alcohol. So when he talks about, you know, harm reduction, using other substances, and if you have an addictive personality, maybe you should be careful. Like, he already knows he has an addictive personality. Like, why is he playing this Russian roulette game with other substances? I don't get it. I don't get it. Let's go. I think people quit harder drugs because you really, you know, can't abuse it in the same way. That's not to say that it can't be abused. You can't abuse it in the same way, but that's not to say it can't be abused. But it's harder to abuse it recreationally than other drugs, which don't... So let me tell you a story about uh, the pharmaceutical industry and what they've been doing, what they've been doing to help the opioid crisis. Um, they've taken drugs like Oxycontin, okay? And they've changed the way that they, they make the drugs so it's not as easy to inject, okay? It turns into a gel so you can't inject it, okay? So it's harder to abuse, but a real drug addict or a real alcoholic, we figure some stuff out don't have that ceiling effect. But regardless of all of these positive effects that I'm talking about, this still does not mean that Kratom is necessarily 100% safe, non-addictive, or free from its own withdrawals. They might not be as bad as heroin withdrawals, but the compound is really not as benign as a lot of the internet would you know, lead you to believe. And what I hope to do by sharing my story is to bring a lot of this misinformation to an end. Now it's about to get good. The thing is, if it wasn't for all this misinformation that I read and then naively believed, I would have personally... 
Okay, just going back to what I said earlier. Yes, like this is why people need to be careful. This is why people need to be careful getting their harm reduction information from the internet. This guy read bad inter information online then he makes videos based on that bad information. And then rather than seeing a professional, people are like, okay, well, I'll see what this guy has to say on YouTube. You know what I mean? Like, what? Like, I don't, I don't get it. Like, this is, this is the problem that we have in the world today. Bad information just keeps going and going and going. And God only knows how many people it affects. Like, always question where you're getting this information from. You're getting it from him. Like, what credentials does he have? We never began using Kratom daily. I mean, it slowly ramped up to daily. I'll get into it shortly, um, no matter. So in case you missed it, and you can check the original video, because I know I didn't put it in this video, but he talks about how he does not recommend that anybody use Kratom daily, right? He just mentioned, and he's gonna get into the story in a minute, that he ramped up to a daily user, all right? That, my friends, is how substance abuse turns into a dependency, psychological or physical, which then turns into addiction. We start doing it a certain amount and it ramps up and eventually we lose control. But again, again, I might be wrong. We haven't watched the whole video yet. For what my reasons were, even if I did have good reasons for it, because, well, I don't believe the benefits really did outweigh the negatives, at least not for me. A lot of the time online when somebody does speak up and they start to talk about some of the very real negatives that do come from, again, usually it's daily use. If you're using it sparingly, like maybe once or twice a week. Um... Again, I wish, I wish I would have been able to use my drugs sparingly. Would have helped me out a lot. These negatives are not going to be apparent. Well that's when the community at large kind of tries to shut you up and fancy thing about me is i really don't care what you guys think about me i'm here to relay my honest experiences and non-biased information and whether you like it or not i'm going to tell you my experience at least what happened to me and what i've noticed has happened to others anyway let's get in all right, so real quick, like I know, I know I'm being very sassy and very sarcastic throughout this video. And like, it's just because it gets me giddy. Like, I just wish people would stop, you know? But like, no, absolutely. Like, I have respect for this guy. Like, regardless of whether or not he gets the right information or not, like, he's trying. He's doing more than most. And like he just said right there, like, I respect it. I respect it. So even though he's not admitting 100% that he was wrong, I respect the fact that he's coming forward and he does care about his audience, okay? So like, please, uh, you know, see past the character that I have during this video and understand like, I hope everything goes well with this guy and if he ever sees it, you know, I'm, I would love to talk to him or, you know, whatever. But anyways, like, I, I'm just giddy because so many people argue about different forms of harm reduction and it all it always leads back to the same thing and like and i'm kind of i'm kind of excited while making this video because the last video i did about why harm reduction was stupid and dangerous i got blown up in my comments and it's like i don't know i i haven't i haven't been proven wrong yet you know like well i don't, I don't know but anyways all right let's watch into my story so basically the first time i tried kratom was a little over two years ago now i was first interested in it because i was hold on i, I gotta pause it and read these things okay so to be clear i had tried uh kratom once seven years ago but it was from a head shop and the dose was so abysmal i felt nothing okay he mentioned this in his last video and i had written it off as ineffective two years ago is when i first uh began using a spar sparingly such as once or twice a week. Okay, cool. He talked about that in the other video. At that time, also diagnosed with ADHD. I was basically diagnosed at 30, and I have a video coming out about that soon. And I really didn't want to use my ADHD meds the way they were prescribed because I'm against taking something every single day because of how it can mess up your neurochemistry. I mean, fancy that. I'm just a total walking contradiction. But anyway, so what I... I like this guy. I like this guy. I know I've been sassing him, but I like this guy. 
I was doing was looking for compounds that I could use in between what I called my focus med doses. So I would take the prescribed amphetamines once every three to five days, and then maybe one or two days a week, I would take Kratom because I believe that since it was, you know, a plant that holds stupid, you know, it's natural, so it's gotta be safe bullshit. And that's largely why I was using it because it actually did help me feel motivated and it was helping me get work done. So what happened with... By the way, if you haven't checked out my video yet uh, um, titled, Is Marijuana Addictive? Same thing, same thing going on here, okay? Even though it doesn't have the same chemical hooks as something like opiates or meth or cocaine, even though it's not the same kind of chemical hooks, it can become addictive. So one of the issues is like this guy, he was diagnosed with ADHD at 30 years old. One of the leading causes, one of the leading causes of addiction is mental illness. A lot of people are trying to self-medicate, which then turns into an addiction. Now, the ADHD meds he took, I don't know if he's gonna mention what he was taking, but he did mention they were amphetamines, okay? These are prescription forms of meth. Um, now, the chemicals are a little bit different, so if he ever sees this, I know he will just blast me for that because he's Mr. Chemist, okay? But anyways, similar effects, all right? So here's something that I talked about, and here's something that I've always thought about when I've watched his channel. Like, I know he's into, like, the psychedelics and these spiritual experiences and stuff like that. Like, I, I've talked about this in other videos. Everything that he's looking for can be achieved through meditation, including, including relief from his symptoms of ADHD. With Kratom was actually rather unique in the fact that I didn't start taking it every day because I became addicted to it. I started taking it every day because I hurt my back. As a lot of you guys know, I like to work out. Sometimes I'm a bit of an idiot and I just lift weight that's way too heavy for me because now I'm in my 30s and I'm becoming this old man who needs to... More self-medication. Freaking warm up so much more than I used to. I was totally blown away with the analgesic effects. It would make the back pain disappear for anywhere from four to even eight hours. That's why I started taking the... Okay, so that it makes sense and it doesn't, but I'm interested. I'm interested to seeing because in his last video, he talks about how it has similar effects to opiates. Now, one of the one of the problems with opiates is, is that opiates don't treat your pain. Opiates help block the pain. They're not actually fixing a problem. All they're doing is making it so the signals aren't going correctly, okay? But the pain is actually still there. So you get addicted to the feeling you're getting. Meanwhile, the pain isn't really getting much better. This is why so many people who get put on pain management programs then develop an addiction. But it's interesting to me because... And by the way, this is all the part I haven't seen yet. It's interesting to me though, because he talks about like, Kratom is used to help people get off opiates, right? But his daily use of the drug developed in the same way an opiate addict did. A lot of opiate addicts, heroin addicts, started off with prescription pain meds because of pain. How do I know this? I'm an opiate addict. I have tons of people come through my treatment center who are opiate addicts, and a lot of the opiate addicts started off because they had some kind of pain. Kratom, daily. Um, but as soon as you make that jump to daily use, it doesn't really stop there. Because now that, at least for me, now that I allowed myself to consume it every day, what happened was once a day would become twice a day. Because the first dose, which started at four grams, which eventually became six and a half grams. Tolerance, 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 tolerance. The way this thing progresses is that first there's use and then there's abuse, okay? Using it other than what's prescribed or what's intended, right? Okay, and then you develop a tolerance and then the tolerance comes along with the dependence. Like. <laughs> would either not really do much or I'd only feel it for 30 minutes. So I'd have to take that dose and then an hour or two later, I'd take another 1.5 to three grams um, to really even get the same effects that I used to get from half that much. And then six hours later, I would start getting withdrawal effects. I'd get a running. Holy crap, six hours, dude? Like, if any of you are opiate addicts watching this, like, it's, it's the same story. It's the same, like, 
when I started using opiates, I started off with like five milligram Laura tabs, okay? Cheap, easy. Take one five milligram Laura tab, it lasts to be like four hours. But then I had to start taking two. Then I had to start taking three. Then I had to start taking them every couple hours and da 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 da. It's just, it it blows my mind that, that people like this who, they have a whole entire channel based on substances, claim to understand addiction, but they keep playing this game with substances and they fall under that same cycle. Like, I, I don't get it. I don't get it, dude. Like, I don't know. I hope I get to talk to this guy sometime. Like, I'm intrigued. I'm, I'm fascinated by this. I know, and I start feeling just really down and shitty. So I would take another dose of about four to five grams, which would you know, carry me through to the next morning. And this habit of doing a dose and then a little booster and then another dose, which is technically three doses a day, kind of carried on for a while. It might have even been as long as four or five months of dosing that heavy. I was average. Yeah, hold on, another note. I was consistently dosing once per day for five to six months. I began sporadically dosing multiple times a day for the final two to three months, and it's become consistent for the final month before quitting. Okay. Like, th that's why I dig about this guy, too, by the way. He puts corrections. He puts notes. He, he tries his best, but I think he can be better and do more. Anywhere from 12 to 15 grams of Kratom per day. The only days that I'd really take off um, from consuming Kratom would be on days where I would consume the focus meds, which, oddly enough, I did keep a pretty steady schedule with. So, so he was doubling up, too. He was still taking the amphetamines. Why is it so bad to, do to dose daily? <laughs> I think I know the answer to that. The primary problem with consuming something so frequently is it actually does change your neurochemistry. It causes a physical shift. Neurologically, the brain is always trying to reach a state of homeostasis. It's always trying to stay leveled because your brain has figured out, okay, every day I'm getting this new substance in, so I'm going to adjust the way I function and what I produce to level off and make things average. So now you slowly begin having to take more and more to really get any effects at all. And even then, a lot of the time, all that's really happening is the drug is making me feel normal. Now the greatest factor in regards to so he clearly knows his stuff. Like he just literally explained like, you know, in a, in a basic short kind of way, what happens, like why withdrawal happens. Like he under, he understands that. But here's the thing, here's the thing. And this is why addiction is such a serious thing. He is well educated on that, but it did not stop him from upping his dosage and doing daily doses. Like that didn't stop him. The knowledge alone did not stop him. Like, man. As to how much your brain is actually going to change is going to have to do with how frequently you're using and of course the sizes of each dose. Uh, my use was actually considered pretty heavy by Kratom standards. Now there's more at play than just your brain's neurochemistry shifting. There is actually an addictive property to Kratom in that you, well, even mentally, start to yearn for it. What it does is, well, it's very similar to smoking or really just all drugs. It puts little hooks inside you. What you start to do mentally is you attach certain things with the use of Kratom and it becomes habitual. For example, all of a sudden when you're on Kratom, going out and socializing feels a lot easier. At least for me, it would make me feel more social um, to the point where you don't even really want to leave your house without it. So you start thinking. Trigger, behavior, reward, okay? Trigger, maybe I, I feel socially anxious out in public, around people, right? Behavior, use Kratom. Reward, makes me calm down, okay? So that lays down a memory in your neural pathway so the next time you have that, that trigger for social anxiety or that uncomfortability, your brain immediately says, well, remember, remember that last time? Remember that thing we used? Go get that, go, go, do, go do that thing again thinking, how can I quit taking this thing when I depend on it so much just to no longer feel so introverted? 
And by the way, here's here's the other issue I, I take. Like these people who are doing harm reduction and da 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 da, all these other things. Like, like have you tried therapy? Like, that's not, by the way, that's not talking down. Like, therapy is a very useful tool. I think most people should try therapy. Like, I even have a link, by the way, here's a plug. I have a link to some online therapy that you can do in the description. So, like, if you're introverted or socially, you know, uh, uh, anxious or anything, like, there, there's, there's ways to do it in a therapeutic way rather than trying to pluck plants from all over the world and see which one's going to help you. I do want to explain some of the negative effects that I received just from dosing so frequently. Uh, sorry, sorry, let me stop, let me stop. Another idea popped in my head. So this is the other problem, and I talked about this. I talked about this exact thing in my other harm reduction video. When you're relying on external substances, okay, or external stimuli even, to make you feel a certain way, you're always screwed. You're always screwed because you're never getting to the root the root of the problem. You're, li you're, you're getting these very short-lived experiences, right? So this this guy, he, his channel's been around for a while, a few years now, and uh, you know it's it's been around. And he's constantly looking for new substances to make him feel the way that he wants to feel. Like rather than looking, you know, not looking inside, but working on the inside to get that. He's always taking things from the outside to try to achieve that. And the problem with that is, is that it's never, ever, ever going to last. For one, I felt very unmotivated, which isn't like me. I think I let my body go the most that I have in over 10 years. The other issue I take is in his last video, he talks about how, like, he was encouraging people. Like, I don't know, dude. I think you should take that other video down. Sorry. I think I think that's what you should do. I don't know if you're still getting money off of it or what, but you should take it down. Because in that video, he was encouraging people. You can check it out. He was encouraging people, like, when you hit a writer's block, Kratom can help you out, right? And, like, and now he's talking about the lack of motivation that he had, like, from Kratom. And by the way, one of the symptoms of withdrawal is, like, depression. You know, like, you get really bummed out. You know what I'm saying? But, like, let's go back to the, the habit loop again. If my, if my trigger is uh, I'm not feeling creative, I'm not feeling motivated, and I use something, something he was encouraging people to do in his last video, um, you're not motivated, use Kratom. Reward, motivation, lays down a memory. Next time you're not motivated, brain says, use Kratom. Boom, 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 boom. All these things. Like, I, I, dude, if you're watching this, take down the old video, okay? We'll call it a wash. I just felt really no urge to exercise anymore. It kind of just makes you feel just really relaxed and calm and like everything is okay in life. It's a numbing effect. I mean, you were on... He's describing it the same way I felt when I was getting high on opiates, by the way. No wonder, like, no wonder why every heroin addict who comes through my treatment center is like, have you heard about that stuff called Kratom? Like, it, it's the same thing, dude. A painkiller. So even emotional pain isn't the same. It always made me feel angrier, especially as it would start to wear off. Well, it was in effect, I'd feel calm, but as it wore off, I was more likely to lose my temper, to snap at people. Some of the other negative effects. Common withdrawal effect from opiates. Irritability. Or is it actually decreases the amount of testosterone you produce. Not to mention it can completely destroy your sex drive, which as you guys can imagine is really great when you're in a relationship. Now again, I know I'm kind of beating a dead horse here, but I do want to point out that all of these negative effects are simply when someone consumes Kratom daily or multiple times a day. Stop it. Stop it. Stop. Like, that'd be like me saying, listen, I just want to make it very clear that heroin is only bad if you become addicted to it. Like, just, just stop. Just stop it. Like, stop it. Like, alcohol. Alcohol, let me make it clear, alcohol is only bad if you develop an addiction to it. Gambling is only bad if you develop an addiction to it. If you develop this psychological dependency to it, then it's bad. Like, that's my problem with harm reduction. We're teaching people to go on a substance and we're trying to teach them how to control it. 
addicts and alcoholics do not have a stop button. Like, there is a problem. Like, dude, go to the National Institute on Drug Abuse, which I don't know if you trust them or not, you know? But you go there, you can see the neuroscience, you can see the brain scans. The problem with us is, is that our dopamine flow is completely unregulated. So I don't like these like little like, hold on, I just wanna make it clear. Only if you do this daily, only if you do this daily, like if somebody could teach me how to use opiates without becoming addicted, I would still be using them. Stop it. There really aren't many drugs that you can safely use every day. And I guess what I'm getting at is because of all the misinformation out there and all the lies about withdrawals, I thought that if I ever wanted to quit and get off it, um, you know, if my back stopped hurting, which was really my reason for taking it until it got to the point where I realized, you know, my back hasn't even hurt for over a month and I'm still taking this every day and I feel like I can't stop. And that's... It, it just bugs me because, like, okay, like, by the way, I, I've done videos about the pharmaceutical industry, how screwed up it is, but, like... He he is demonizing the pharmaceutical industry, but he thinks it's okay to do exactly what the pharmaceutical industry is doing to people. They keep giving it to you, even though it's not solving the pain, but they keep giving it to you. What? Where's the logic in that, dude? That's when like the light bulb went off and I said, I got a problem here. Again, I'm glad this dude got some help. Good job. What happened was I realized that I was never going to feel like myself again as long as I was consuming Kratom. And I was kind of contradicting everything I stand for. I must have believed that because it was a plant, it meant that it was okay or because it was related to coffee and you can drink coffee. All right, so uh, by the way, for those of you who haven't, I'm gonna plug my addiction course. Go to TheRewiredSoul.com. Here's what I'm gonna do. Go to TheRewiredSoul.com. If you have made it to this point in the video, because I've been talking to for 40 minutes now, go to TheRewiredSoul.com, take my addiction course, and use coupon code It's Free. I-T-S-F-R-E-E. -E, it's free. Anybody who has watched this video for 40 minutes, go take my course. So here is the problem with addiction. Here's a preview of something that's in my course. I talk about the problem with the prefrontal cortex. Part of the problem with the prefrontal cortex being affected by addiction is that it's responsible for self-awareness, right? We don't even realize that there's a problem. We're delusional to the fact. You know, it takes this miraculous moment of clarity for us to snap out of it. This dude was very lucky, very lucky for it to only last a few months. So again, if you have made it to this point in the video, go to www.therewiredsoul.com, okay? Sign up for the Science of the Addiction course. It's usually $100. I'm gonna give it to you for free. Coupon code, it's free, no spaces coffee every day that I could take Kratom every day when it was fine. I, on some level, really believe that the effects were very benign. I used to tell people this, and I was just so effing wrong. And I'm completely okay admitting when I'm wrong. We all make mistakes in life. And what's really important... Yeah, like... No, dude, like, it's a dangerous mistake. Like, it's not like... Well, sorry. Told you it was 4.30, but it's really like 4.15. Like... No, man, like you, you, you market your channel, you market your channel as this like safe channel, giving people the proper information. You know, this isn't like, this is a big whoopsie, dude. This is a big whoopsie. Like this goes along the lines of like a doctor, like a doctor making like a big medical mistake, amputating the wrong leg, giving somebody a medication that they're allergic to. Like this is life threatening. Like, come on, like, even though the overdoses haven't happened, okay, but for addicts like us, we use it, okay, so let's play this game real quick. 
You're using Kratom, using Kratom, using Kratom, right? Dosing go up, doses go up. Your withdrawal is happening, happening faster. You gotta use more, buy more. You're running out of money. Now you can't afford the Kratom. You can't afford the Kratom, especially when you're getting a ship from other countries because the stuff here, like you mentioned, at the head shops, it's not, it, it's not that effective, right? So what do you do? What do you do when you have the psychological dependence and you need it, you need it, you get irritable, you get depressed, you're unmotivated, you can't do anything. You know what you do? You know what you do? You go find other drugs. That is why prescription opiate addicts turn to heroin. That's why. I was a prescription opiate addict. Those things are expensive and hard to come across on the streets, okay? That's why I was this close to heroin. So I, I'm sorry, dude, like glad, you're, glad you quit, glad you figured it out, but I do not like the fact that you're like, well, my bad. Like, we're not, we're not talking about something simple here, dude important is that you learn from them and grow so you can continue on making more mistakes and learning from those and growing again the reason why like no 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 like uh, the disclaimer on all on every everything from this channel is like i'm not a doctor i'm not a scientist it, the disclaimer should say i'm just a guy who google stuff and then I make videos with all the information I can come with. Like, that should be his disclaimer, okay? Because, yes, learn, grow. Like, everything you're saying, like, from an ideological point of view, absolutely. Mistakes, learn from it, grow. Cool. But not when we're messing with the substances people are putting in their bodies and telling them what's safe, what's not, what's addictive, what's not. No, sir. No, 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 no. I was apprehensive to make this video is because I don't want to make it look like Kratom is this dangerous thing. Uh, well, the truth is, what's dangerous is just taking any drug every single day unless you plan on doing that for the rest of your life. For example, if I was in chronic pain every day due to a serious injury, then I'd feel no problem with taking it every day. So what it really just comes down to is what are you... I'm gonna do more videos about chronic pain and other treatment methods like like, that, that's the problem. He already mentioned the problem. You take it for so long, you no longer even know if you're experiencing the pain. So by the way, one of the, one of the issues with um, uh, pain management programs is that when you become hooked on a substance for pain, your brain is actually intensifying the pain as a way to make you go use the drugs. So in most cases, the pain is a lot less than what the person is actually feeling. What are your symptoms? Do you actually need it? And are you prepared to be dependent on this compound? If the answer is Again. Why are you why are you knocking on the pharmaceutical companies again? Knock on the they suck, but you're trying to be your own your your own pharmaceutical company right here. You know what I mean? Like no to that, then you probably shouldn't. Before long, you're not going to be you without it. Not to mention, quitting is a goddamn hellish nightmare. I need to figure out where he gets his music. It was that evening that I started getting the withdrawal effects, which was really just a runny nose. And I thought, guess what I read, that that's all that was going to happen. Sleeping that night was fine. I didn't really have any issues. Um, but the next day, I felt terrible. It was really challenging to make it through the day without dosing. I had a lot of mental and even physical cravings for it. I just physically felt like shit. I had no energy. I felt sick. I had a runny nose. My sinuses were all clogged up. And I had no motivation to do any. This, this is a terrible joke. But if you're using... If, if, okay, let's play this. Okay, let's say, let's say somebody was a heroin addict. And they decided to use Kratom to get off heroin, right? What do they use to get off Kratom? You see, you see where this goes? You see how this keeps t -t 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 trickling down? Because I made a video about safe forms of harm reduction, which is with a medical professional and tapering off. Anything, not even make myself food. I didn't have an appetite. That night is when I realized, okay, I'm in for a battle here because sleeping was basically out of the question. I had not only full-on insomnia, I started getting shakes. My body would just... But then it would kind of evolve into more from just shaking to like 
it would be in my hand and I'd have to just shake this hand and then I'd like yep we call them the shakes body tremors welcome to withdrawal brother use all my energy to stop that hand from shaking and then it would go to that this hand and then I'd be like oh, stop this hand from shaking and the next thing I know my leg is <laughs> I thought there's no way in hell I'm ever going to get to sleep on the third day the effect I'm I'm uh, I'm glad I'm as you can see I'm bouncing around on this video. I'm glad he's making this. So like I I I hope I hope to uh you know to make up for the other video he did about it. I hope everybody who watched that video is now watching this one if they were on the fence about trying Kratom like watch this and be prepared. Like if you want to experiment with this like all the things that he was just doing like Get ready, and the runny nose, and the no sleep, and I'm sure there's some more symptoms he's about to talk about. Effects just got worse and worse. I had absolutely no energy. I kept explaining to people that it felt like I was moving through quicksand. Like, just my movements felt slow, and I started getting joint pain. My knees hurt. My hips hurt. Um, I felt absolutely depressed. I just felt so low. I felt like without kratom i was never going to experience happiness again what really struck me the hardest was just how depleted my energy was like even just going to the bathroom was a challenge getting up was a challenge i couldn't move it was i've never had that little energy before and i kept thinking so if this is how old people feel no wonder they move so slow because i was i know that feel bro i did a cold turkey opiate detox i know that feel moving like a 90 year old man and then i started doing research and that's when i realized that these withdrawals aren't more research from daily use they're actually quite common i also realized that the best way to quit kratom because these withdrawals suck oh so here we go hard, is to actually lower your dose very slowly a lot of people suggest lowering your dose 10 percent each month meaning well it could take like half a year or more to quit and i thought Hell no, I don't want to do this. I want. <laughs> I'm sorry. So, harm reduction channel over here. It's talking about Kratom as a form of harm reduction. And then to get off, <laughs> to get off of Kratom, you try harm reduction <laughs> for Kratom. <laughs> okay, I'll let, I'll let you finish. To be done with this as quickly as possible. I don't want to have to drink this green sludge for the rest of my life to just feel like myself. And one of the things that I decided to do to really help me through the process was work out again. Even though I really didn't feel like it, I felt like absolute shit, but I still forced myself to exercise because in doing that, I realized that I could force myself to do things that I don't enjoy, such as by the way, pro tip for anybody, I, I have people ask me this all the time, how do I deal with withdrawal? But not even not even withdrawal, more so post-acute withdrawal. So post-acute withdrawal can happen weeks, months after you've already tapered off of like Suboxone or whatever it is. Um, post-acute withdrawal, your body is still like trying to figure stuff out. And what he just talked about, forcing yourself to work out, yoga's good, going for walks, you know, any kind of physical activity, okay? That's gonna help out. So if any of you are thinking about coming off of something like, you gotta force yourself to get up and move. I started walking my mom's dog and things like that. Like, so do that. As I could force myself to get through this shitty process. What a lot of people don't realize who have never gone through Wait a second. I wasn't able to properly sleep till the seventh day, and it took a total of 18 days till I started to feel myself again. Well then. An addiction, a huge reason why people fail and they relapse is not because they necessarily want to get high. What I found was the actual cravings disappeared really quickly. Within three or four days after my last dose, I physically wasn't craving it um, You know, for the uplifting effects. I was just craving any way I could to feel normal again. Yes, yes, yes. Like, dude, this guy is, okay, like, no joke, no joke. We could read, we could replay this. We could take out the, we could take out the word Kratom and just replace it with opiates or heroin. Literally every part of this story is like what happens to an opiate addict, right? Most people no longer use opiates to get high 
they're doing it to get well. That's what he's talking about. Like he, he understands that. Like it's the same thing with people who have developed a dependency to kratom, right? Like it happens to them because, like it's so agonizing. Like they they only want to use just so they can feel well. Like please delete your other video. Just please for me, please. To be able to sleep. I can't even imagine what people go through who are getting off heroin and how much. The same thing, bro. The same thing. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, like it's the same thing with methadone. Like what? Like, oh, heroin's so brutal. Let's put you on methadone. Like unless you're ready to, like same thing like he said with creative. Like unless you're prepared to be on methadone forever, like stay away from it because it's you're gonna develop the same dependency like that's just it's that's what's gonna happen so they need something like kratom to help them through that um or even things like oxycodone or methadone the withdrawals from that daily yeah they, they gotta be much much worse or nope no they sound about the same sound about the same dude like just being honest with you like clearly you've never had an opiate addiction I'll, I'll be your guy. I'll let you know. Like, it's the same thing. So I've, I've made my decision about Kratom. Not for it. Against it. Or maybe I, I just had some really, really shitty withdrawals, which is definitely true. But Nope. Nope. Not just you. Because remember how you said like five minutes ago, how you saw that anybody who went through daily use had the exact same symptoms of withdrawal? So no, it wasn't. It wasn't just you. You know this. You know it. You know it. But you're still trying to advocate for Kratom because you're all about harm reduction and natural substances. And da -da -da -da. no, 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 it wasn't just you. Anybody who does daily use, they're going to have this the same come down. Still, there's no way that those come anywhere close to heroin withdrawals. I feel for people on a whole new level now who have to go through that. It's tough, man. I appreciate that, sir. But it sounds like the same thing okay well okay heroin and opiate withdrawals there's a few more side effects like and you might have not even mentioned them all like i think of like the cold sweats i think about the nausea i i had cramping and all sorts of other stuff too but i appreciate i appreciate that you said that it is a challenge to just find like hope every day that you're going to get your motivation back that you're going to be you again but anyway this video has gone on for long enough if you guys are interested in the story as to how or why i was prescribed adhd medication at the age of 30 and you know my opinion on that medication then you can check that video out on my second channel swim now the video may or may not be released at the time of releasing this one it might come out in like a day or two i also have some good news to announce there is going to be a psych substance merch shop which will be opening soon and i'll be offering some of the items that you guys have been asking for super excited about that i'm just waiting for some of the test clothing to come in oh uh, so oh, I can just oh no sure what am i doing good. but in the meantime uh, you can support us on Patreon. If you oh, want okay, content. cool. Until next time, take yeah. care, guys. Open He's got a Patreon. I've got a test kit link in the video description if you need one. Cool. And I will see you guys all in the next video. I'll see you later, brother. All right. Okie dokie. That was cool. All right, everybody. So, I hope... I'm glad that you all shared that journey with me. I know this went on long. How does... How do I, you know pull that off a uh, 20 minute video and I make it an hour long. I just, I, I had a lot to say about it. You know what I mean? Like I wanted you guys to see my reactions and I, you know, um, to be honest, this was easier than me scripting something out and breaking apart and editing and stuff. Like, there you go, there you go. There, I just explained to you all like my views on harm reduction, okay? Like, so I don't know if this guy will see it and uh, you know, I, I'm glad, you know, he does what he does, but I think he he could be uh, a lot better at what he does. He, he has another video where he completely just brutalizes another channel from like Germany or something. But you know, like, you're kind of doing the same thing, bro. So if you ever watch this, hope you take the other video down. You ever want to chat? You ever want to collab? You ever want to talk? You, you know where to find me, all right? But anyways, everybody, if you've made it this long, if you've made it this long, I'll give you the coupon code again, all right? So if you want to learn more about addiction, www.therewiredsoul.com. Sign up for the Science of Addiction course, usually $100. Use coupon code 
It's free. I-T-S-F-R-E-E. But anyways, if you're new here, haven't yet, make sure you hit the little uh, subscribe button. And if you want, you can click or tap on one of those thumbnails. Check out some other videos on this channel. I'm always doing stuff about mental health as well as addiction recovery. I love y'all. You're all beautiful. Thanks for hanging out this long. I'll see you next time.